Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Hopefully it's going pretty good. So what we're going to do today is that we're going to continue to work on hypotheses tests, and we're going to be working on them um, from the beginning all the way to the end. So what I have for you guys is a warm up. And in this warm up, what I want you to do is I want you to state the null and the alternative hypothesis, given the setup. Then I want you to calculate the standard error, the sample proportion, the p naught, and the z test. After that, I want you to find the p-value, and then I want you to state a conclusion. So after I show this to you, I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to write it down, and then I'll give you about seven minutes to work on it. And then if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. OK? All right. So here is the problem. So go ahead, write that down. And you know the drill, go ahead and give me a little thumbs up when you're done writing it down. Hey, John. Miranda. Thanks, Anna. All right. Cool. So I'm going to put you guys in breakout rooms like I typically do. And again, I'll give you like five to seven minutes to work on this. So we'll get back together at about 8, 10. And then we will discuss. So don't forget to talk to your group members. So I overheard the answers that some of you guys got, and they sounded amazing. So let's look at this together. So would anybody like to volunteer to answer the first question? So what is our null hypothesis? We got a uh, 0.25, and then for the H, a1, we got um, P is greater than 0.25. Perfect. Nice job, guys. All right. And then for the next one, for the standard error, we are going to have that square root of 0 0.25 times 1 minus 0 0.25. I don't know why I wrote it so small, divided by 80. So for the standard error, you should have gotten 0 0.0484. And then for our p hat, to figure that out, well, we had 26 people that were retired. So that's 26 successes. 
out of 80 individuals over the age of 63 total that we looked at. So we should have 26 divided by 80, which is going to give you 0 0.325. And then our P-naught, that's the percentage that we think that the population is or that we're giving the benefit of the doubt that the population is. So that would be our 0 0.25. Lastly, we need to figure out our Z-test statistic because that's the thing that we're going to need to find the P-value. So that's comparing our sample to the perceived population value. So for that one, we're going to have 0 0.325 minus 0 0.25, all divided by that standard error of 0 0.0484. And when you guys do that, you're going to round it to two decimal places, because that's as many decimal places as you can use on that Z table. So you should get 1.5. So give me a thumbs up, a happy face, um, party streamers, whatever, if those answers look pretty good to you. Yay, party streamers. Thumbs up. Great. Good. All right. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions before we move on to finding the p-value? Before we find the p-value, I'm just going to draw a little picture right here. And because we were determining if the population was greater than or more extreme than 25%, that means that we're looking for values like our sample or more extreme to the right. So since it's going to be values to the right, when we look at the z-score table, which I will pop up right here, Remember that the z-score table only gives you those areas that are to the left. So what that means is once we find the value inside the table, to get that area to the right, we're going to have to subtract it from 1. So I'm going to look at my z-score table, and I'm going to look for the value for 1.55. And what I get is 0.9394. So to get my p-value, I need to do 1 minus that 0.9394, and what you should get is 0 0.0606, which would be this guy. All right, so the last thing we want to do is write our conclusion. So if you wrote some variation of this, it's totally fine. Don't get too hung up on the verbiage. Just want to make sure that we all come to the same conclusion. So the probability H naught is true is 6.06%. This is too high so we fail to reject H0. One more um, little side note here is that we're assuming that our significance level is 0 0.05. So if we didn't explicitly say a significance level, we assume that it's 0 0.05. So remember that little uh, cute um, rhyme I told you guys the other day? If P is low, reject HO 
means reject the null hypothesis. And if it's not, then you fail to reject. All right. So before we move on, how did you guys feel about that warm up? Do you have any questions? I feel like you went pretty good. What do you think? Um, I'm a little confused on the um, on the conclusion part. So uh, if P is low, reject HO, like, I just am confused on that. Like why, so 6.06, .06, what would be high? I mean, how do we know? So if the P value is less than the significance level, then we can reject H naught, but since 6% is greater than 5%, then we can't reject. Okay, so. So here, I'll write it down so that you can write it down. So since P value is greater than alpha, you fail to reject. <coughs> Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. Good. All right. Any other questions before uh, we move on? And by move on, I wanted to show you guys how to use technology to calculate this out. Okay. So if you don't want to do this by hand, which by the way, I think it's, I think it's really nice to do it by hand. Like you get to really check your work make sure that you understand. You also get to practice things that we learned in unit four and five. However, using um, the technology is really nice because you get to check your work and also you get a really quick vis visualization of what you're doing. So if you go down to the technology section in unit six, you're gonna see a video explaining how to use the hypothesis calculator. You know, also have um, a couple of examples. So when you click on that hypothesis test calculator link on the bottom, it's going to bring this up. Now, something important to note is that this calculator will do a lot of different things. So you wanna make sure that you are on proportions and single proportions. We'll also be using this calculator when we start doing um, two sample comparisons, which will be the difference in proportions. And we'll also be looking at it when we're looking at single means and the difference in means in the next unit. So here's how you use this calculator. It's gonna ask you for your null proportion. So in our case, our null proportion or what we thought H naught is, is going to be 0 0.25. The next thing that you're going to put in is you're going to put in your sample proportion, which we found was 0.325. And lastly, what you need is your sample size, which we found was 80. Now, the last thing that you want to do before you hit calculate is you want to make sure that your alternative hypothesis is correct. So we thought that the proportion of people that are retired in Florida is higher. So we think that P is actually greater than P naught. And you can also set your significance level. So by default, the significance level is 0 0.05, AKA 5%, so it's perfect. Now, here's the cool thing is once you hit calculate, what it will do over here, <clears throat> is it will give you the z-score for your sample, which was 1.55. That's the same thing that we found. It will also give you your p-value, which is 6.07%. We found 6.06%. Totally fine, just a little bit of rounding. And then the other really cool thing about this calculator is that it gives you a verbal interpretation. So we would expect to see a sample proportion as extreme as 0.325, 6% of the time under the null hypothesis. Then what it also does on this neat calculator is it gives you a verbal interpretation. So since 
that 6.07% is greater than our significance level of 5%, we don't have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So pretty cool stuff. All right, any questions on how to use that calculator? Um, so I'm having like a little bit of a connection error. So like it'd freeze and then you'd go silent. Where is, where can we find that calculator at? Oh, so that calculator is, one second. <clears throat> it's located at the bottom, towards the bottom of unit six. So if you scroll down, you'll see technology and there will be a little video showing you how to use the um, the website, and the website is hyperlinked right here. Okay, I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, neat. So again, you guys are 100% more than welcome to use that calculator. Cuts down on calculation time a little bit, and also it's just a really nice way to check your work. All right, so the last example that we are going to do for today is we are going to look at, again, running a hypothesis test, but this time it's going to be a little bit different because we're going to be looking at a twin-tailed hypothesis test. So flipping a coin. results in getting tails. Fifty percent of the time. We want to know. If flipping a loon, a Canadian coin, has a difference. Result. We flip the coin fifty times, and get tails. Well, it's not right, 28. Let's do 21. All right, so here's the setup. We know that flipping a coin, we have a 50-50 chance of getting tails. We want to know if flipping a loon, which is a Canadian coin, has a different result. So maybe that Canadian coin is weighted more heavily on one side. Maybe they use a different kind of metal than we do here. We don't know, so we want to find out. So what we do is that we get our hands on a loon, and we flip that coin 50 times, and we get tails 21 times. So here is the first step. We want to write our null and our alternative hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is that this coin is just like every other coin, which means we're going to have a 50% chance of getting tails. Now, our alternative hypothesis is 
is that it is not the same. Now, if we assume that a coin is fair, that means that we have 50% in the center. If we get a really low number of tails on a fair coin, well, that has the same probability as getting a really high number of tails on a coin, right? Both of those are equally probable if our null hypothesis is true. So does that make sense? If you have a fair coin, getting a very low number of tails is the same as getting a very high number of tails? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now. Here's the deal though, is we only have one sample, right? We only have that one sample. So because we only have that one sample, even though both of these tails are equally likely, we're probably, well not probably, we're only gonna get one result when we run our sample. What we really want to know is we want to know what's the probability that we get something just as extreme on this other side. Okay, so if we get our sample here, we want to know what's the probability that our sample could have been over here. So just to say it one more time, our sample can only fall on one of these tails. But we want to know how likely it is that we get something like our sample or more extreme. So we want to know what's probability that it could have been really high as well. So here's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna find our standard error. We're gonna find our P hat, our P naught, and our Z test. So that standard error is going to be 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 divided by 50. Okay, our P naught, or I'm sorry, our P hat is going to be by 1 divided by 50, and our P naught is 0.5. So go ahead and plug those two things into your calculator just to get that practice <clears throat> and see what you get. So for my standard error, I got 0 0.0707. And for my P hat, I got 0 0.14. All right, so now I have enough information to run that Z test. So that's gonna be my P hat minus my P naught, all divided by my standard error. I'm going to get a Z test statistic of negative 1.13. All right, I'm going to pause here for just a second. Um, go ahead and give me a thumbs up when you're ready for me to move on to the next part.
So the third thing that we want to do So I'm just going to draw a quick picture again. Take her Z test statistic is negative 1.13, which means it's going to be on this side because remember, if you have a negative Z score or Z test statistic, that means you're going to be below the mean. Kind of pull that up on my fancy z score table. So negative 1.13 is going to give me 0 0.1292. So that gave me that side. Now remember, I want to know what probability I see something as extreme as my sample. So getting tails 21 out of 50 times is just as extreme as getting heads 21 out of 50 times. So what I also want to do is I want to find this probability as well, or the opposite side. which would be positive 1.13. So does anybody know how I could find the probability on this side if I know the probability on this side? Do you wow. subtract it from one or subtract it from one? Almost. I'm just guessing. <laughs> oh, I like it. The answer is actually way easier than you would think. So here's the dealio. This is called the symmetric distribution. So if this side is 0.1292, this side is also 0.1292. I know it's one of those moments where you're like, oh, really? Why'd you even ask those? <laughs> it was that simple. So our p-value then is going to be 2 times 0 0.1292. Which is going to be 0 0.2584. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that neat um, <clears throat> hypothesis calculator, and I just want to check my work. I want to make sure if I thought about this the right way. Go to unit six, and I scroll down until I see this cool video showing me how to use the calculator. And I click here. And I'm going to change my numbers. So my null hypothesis is 50%, so 0.5. What I saw in my sample was 0.42. And I flipped this coin 50 times, so that would be my sample size. And I also just thought that this Canadian coin would just have a different value. So I'm going to say P does not equal P naught. Hit calculate. And again, our Z score is negative 1.13, which is what we found. So we did great. Our probability is 25.79%. So pretty close to what we found. Okay. We use the table, so of course it's going to round a little bit, so our answer is going to be slightly different, but that is very close. So since our p-value is so high, it's 25%, it's nowhere near 5%, 
then we have no evidence that a Canadian coin is any different than a U.S. coin. Also, if you scroll down, I think this is pretty cool. It's probably just me because I'm a dork, but I love that they shade in the tails for you. And they're like, hey, this is right here. And this is right here. So I just think that's really neat. All right, does anybody have any questions about this or concerns or confusions? Um, so like for our homework, mm -hmm. let's say we do it by hand and we get that 25.84%. Mm -hmm. Then we go check it on the technology and we get that 0.79%. Which mm -hmm. answer would you prefer, the calculated one on the technology? Um, either one will be fine. Okay. Yeah, either one's good. Cool, thank um, you. On the what are we what's the conclusion on this last one? I just I didn't write it oh, down. No, we didn't get there yet. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. cool. So the conclusion the conclusion. So our p-value was 0 0.2584, which is greater than alpha, which is 0 0.5. So what we would say is, there is a, 25.84% chance H naught is true. Therefore, we failed to find evidence. You reject H naught. So another way to say it, if you wanted it in like plain English, <laughs> is we don't have evidence showing a Canadian coin is different from a standard coin. All right. Looking good? Okay. So <clears throat> that is what I have for you guys today. So here's what we're going to be doing tomorrow and maybe a little bit on Friday. We'll see um, how tomorrow goes. Is we're going to switch gears just a little bit and we're going to look at comparing two samples. So right now what we've been doing is that we've been looking at comparing a single sample to a perceived population. What we're gonna do next is that we're gonna compare two samples. So this could be comparing cats and dogs, males and females, um, old and young, things like that. If we have two samples and wanna compare them to each other. So when we do that, next time, what we're gonna be doing is mostly focusing on setting up the hypothesis and then getting the conclusion. And we're gonna leave all the math to the technology.
Sounds good. Okay, cool. Well, class is over, so I will see you guys tomorrow. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye now.